All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the third session of season two of the Amalthea game. Uh, just real quick, I did want to apologize for uh, literally saying we'll go weekly forever, and then we were off for like two to three weeks. Uh, you know, stuff happens, and we do our best to work around scheduling issues. Uh, but the good news is that, again, unless something random comes up, the idea is that we will be weekly uh, at least until Gen Con, because come Gen Con, I'm going to be off for two weeks, so more on that as we get closer. Um, but since it's been a while, uh, I'm actually going to be doing the log, the opening log myself, from the perspective of Commander Cam. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So, uh, Commander Cam's personal log, Stardate 63605.3. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, they did. Okay, maybe that's not as bad as it sounds, but it's still not great. I mean, what are we supposed to do with a ship two miles big that supposedly comes from an alternate federation? We can't send it back where it came from without crewing it, and even then, there's not enough energy left in the planet portal generator thing, we really need to name it, to do it. To fix that problem, we have to risk sending a team on what could be a one-way trip to whatever the hell the other side means to reclaim some sort of power for the portal generator planet. Th okay, we really need a name. I'm sure that'll go just fine. All sunshines and puppy shitting rainbows. The Vanguard captains are going to be meeting within the next hour to discuss what to do. I really can't wait for that. Oh, uh, computer, add about 30% more sarcasm to that last sentence, and then end log. So yeah, uh, the captains will be meeting very shortly, uh, sans Beckett, since uh, Walter is out this week. Uh, but before we get to a captain's meeting, uh, we do have to have a scene in sickbay, as a uh, rather ill Captain Murthrin is uh, walking into Pure Sickbay. Evening, Brat. Captain, you don't sound too good. Yeah, uh, funny story. So, uh, turns out the planet, uh, not biologically sterile, and uh, there's a species of plant that generates pollen that doesn't give humans any problems, but does not agree with betazoid physiology and specifically betazoid vocal cords. I can see that. Um, let's see what we can do to help you out. Cool. Let's do a scan. Yeah, roll me a, a reason medicine, please. Difficulty of zero. So you are set up to succeed here. Xenobiology? Yeah. Very nice. You start off with three momentum. Uh, yeah, I also perfect. have dedicated uh, focus xenobiology, so we get a bonus momentum because nice. I rolled two or rolled a crit. Very nice. You're up to four momentum. Good start. All right. Uh, so what you find, Prier, is that Mirthrin's pretty much nailed it on the head. Uh, the spores, the pollen, um, they are basically turning his uh, throat into a arid landscape. Which leads to the scratchy voice, which leads to discomfort in general. Uh, it is something you can fix with a minor, minor analgesic. Um, but it's not something that you can just like hypo spray and fix immediately. It's one of those things where it just has to take time to wear off. Well, good news, Captain. We can... Fix it, but it's not an instant fix. Oh, b better slow than half done. And of course, because I find it funny, it's right about then that Jensen rounds the corner and says, Doctor, I... Oh, hi, Captain. Uh, you all right? I'll give you two guesses. Oh, good Lord. Uh, okay, you know what? I have a headache, but it sounds like you are the better patient here. So, Doc, I'm just gonna, you know, take... I'll I'll just go see a different nurse. And Jensen walks out awkwardly. <laughs> Surprisingly conscientious, that man. You're not wrong. All right, let's see what we can do. All right. Say so, you know you. 
take a hypo spray, you give him what you can. And uh, it's right about then uh, that, Captain Merthrin, you receive uh, your computer reminder that the captain's meeting is set to begin in approximately 15 minutes. Oh, good grief. I forgot about that. Uh, this will be interesting. So, and uh, you get out the door. So before we do the captain's meeting, uh, as usual, I do want to give people an opportunity to handle any scenes that they wish. So again, prior to the meeting, is there any scene that people would like to get out of the way? Nope, I'm good here. Right. I have a scene for later. Captain's okay. meeting. So, in that case, we are going to go to the Amalthea Conference Room, where we finally have the familiar scene of most of the captains, plus Rear Admiral Skull. And yeah, uh, I'm going to let you guys run your own meeting. Uh, Cam will remind you that this is the discussion not only of what to do with the USS Leviathan, the universe class, but how to deal with the potential mission to send someone, uh, quote-unquote, to the other side for the whole energy retrieval thing. And yeah, take it from there. Captains, I'm assuming that the first option should not be to rename this or rechristen this vessel the USS uh, Skull and add it to our fleet. Uh, as uh, as much as it, as much as we could possibly learn from it, I'm Admiral? thinking our first option should be to try and send it back where it came from. Agreed. Which means that I think the universe class and the question of how to recharge the batteries on our uh, wormhole planet, uh, we need to decide on a name for that. Uh, Gate World, Rift Maker? Stargate? That's a good one. But uh, be that as it may, there is the question of uh, what, this, what the uh, computer meant by the other side, quote-unquote. I would be remiss if I did not remind you that the Leviathan had put out a distress call, and that is what caused the Rift Maker, Stargate, what have you, to actually pull it from its dimension. Which actually is uh, curious. Uh, what was it about this thing's distress call that actually got the Gateworld's attention? We are unable to just uh, determine that. However, it was enough to actually empty the ship. And it holds quite a huge crew complement, but was not actually crewed when we found it. This is a disturbing discovery. And it suggests that the thing was left derelict long before it uh, arrived here. So what should we do about ensuring that whatever depopulated the ship, if indeed it was a hostile force or act of nature, how do we prevent that, that from entering our side if we decide to open the gate? Well, we these wormholes do tend to be one way from what we've seen. If we get a, a mild spatial imbalance, it might act more as a uh, pulling things into the wormhole than it would be to allow free travel. would need uh, to be much of a balance in the, the that would be I would not want to risk game. being pulled into string cheese that way. So it would be either risking creating a spatial vacuum or risking whatever's on the other side of this hair coming into our universe. We do not know the severity of the infestation, whatever the life-sucking thing is. Mm. Uh, maybe some sort of... figure we can send some sort of scanning probe ahead of it. There was a... I'm reading uh, your report on their shuttle bay, uh, Captain Panek assuming shuttle bay is adequate for something that is currently storing six starships larger than a defiant class? I don't even believe cavern is a, co a correct adjective for the size of that uh, well, section. Okay. 
Amalthea Shuttle Bay holds ships that would be larger than the NX class back in the early days of space exploration. I would compare it something sizable to Utopia Planitia myself. Also a reminder that we are not actually using the gateway to open a rift to the other side. In fact, the uh, I believe one of the ships, I believe it was the USS Venus, also comes equipped with a quantum drive, just like the Leviathan. Perhaps uh, the, this USS Venus's computer system is intact, might be able to provide us with more more thorough readings on the event that took place, might be able to replicate it and punch a hole large enough for at least maybe we could send a scouting party through. Uh, and our dragon squad's always willing to volunteer for dangerous missions. Uh, Cam does cough and says, um, on that note, Admiral, um, it may not have made it into your report, but that was actually what the scouting team on the Leviathan first thought was to check the the shuttles and, what are they called, the Cestus class uh, ships that we're talking about. Uh, whatever wiped the computer cores uh, of the Leviathan also affected all of the small craft. Though I don't know if you could call them small craft. You know what I mean. Yes, I do. And to be completely honest, I stopped reading the reports once I hit the appendices. Yeah, there were a lot of those. They were off them. Actually, they were thicker than the report itself. It was quite daunting. Anyways, so, um, well, let's see if this if Dragon Squad is interested. I am more than in. We can send them along to on the Venus if they're interested. Are is the Dragon Squad uh, around, or are they in the Alpha Quadrant? Uh, so right now, out of character, Dragon Squad is approximately uh, a week out. Like, they're on one of the routes back to the Gamma Vanguard from the Alpha Quadrant. So you can conceivably wait the full week if you wanted to. There's no nothing really stopping you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted to, like, do a we-go-now kind of a thing, you would have to pick from the characters that are available now. Uh, in the meantime, though, maybe we, let's work out... Uh what we're going to do about the uh, wormhole planet because uh, with bringing this bringing the leviathan through it's uh, more or less drained the entire energy reserve there's not much that we really can do until we dis uh, determine what the other side is exactly well Has, just... uh, in any progress made on the um figuring out what that that refers to Cam uh, looks through her notes and says, our best guess is it's just another universe, another alternate universe uh, that the, uh, well, we don't know if it's the same one the Leviathan came from, but best guess is that it probably is. Uh, I, would I mean, it would make thing. sense why the, uh, it even picked up the distress call in the first place. I mean, if it is connected to another universe, it would make sense that it could pick up distress calls from that universe. Exactly. And conceivably, if it was connected to multiple universes, it would be picking up distress calls all the time. Because there would be an infinite amount of distress to vehicles. Vessels. Perhaps that this ship is somehow unique? I believe that is the case since it has a quantum drive. It would have been able to maybe project the distress signal through to another dimension. Agreed. Either way, we're not going to learn any more just sitting around in this conference room. This is going to be an interesting trip, Captains. As much as I'd like to wait for Dragon Squad, I feel that if this ship is missing from a home universe, the home universe people are going to start investigating. And I don't want anything that potentially built this ship or worse that could potentially ca cause this ship to emit a distress signal finding out about our universe before we can find out more about theirs hmm. so scouting mission to an alternate dimension it is 
with the potential for diplomatic and tactical scenarios on the other side, would you elect a captain to crew the Cestus that we are taking? Uh, yes, I believe that it, I I will ask for volunteers. I will Just, volunteer. Uh, I forget which captain that is. That's Tucson, I believe. Yep, that he has a background in diplomacy. Ah, handy. And one of my folk, or one of my values is cultural diversity is required for success. Nice. And I think it's a nice change up. Gives prayer a little bit of time in the captain's seat. Yep. Uh, all those in favor of of signing Captain Two's on this mission? Aye. Raises his hand. Well, uh, as will Skull. Very well. I think it'd be best if we search for vol if we ask for volunteers for this mission. I don't think ordering individuals to a one time a potential one way trip is. I mean, we all have that within our cap capability and have to do that potentially, but I think volunteers are a far better choice in this instance. Do don't you, captains? I would agree. And it's not like we've got any shortage of uh, daredevils in this fleet. All right. So, uh, the question out of character becomes, who is everybody going to be volunteering slash bringing for this mission? And also, which ship are we taking? Well, the ship you're taking is the USS Venus. Uh, it is okay. the um, only ship that is equipped, supposedly, uh, to go uh, to the go. other side. Yeah, it's a combination of it's got the tech, it's small enough that a small crew could handle it, and it mean, means we aren't like potentially sacrificing one of our own ships. Mm -hmm. uh, Darval will go. Darval, all right. Let's see, mm. who would work with a scratchy voice? Should we should we take main characters or do you think supporting characters are enough? Um, I would say that uh, you are not limited by you know like like I don't want to say it's it couldn't be a one way trip because you know anything can happen, but like if you want to take a main character, take a main character. Um, I think we need a medical officer, and I think Scrim would be interested in seeing what the spores, molds, and fungi look like in the alternate universe. Scrim, all right. Uh, Scrim's on the Lysithia, right? Yes. Yes. All right, there's Scrim. All right, we're at three out of five, so I need to know what Bishop's bringing and what uh, you're bringing. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking through. I'm trying to figure it out. A suggestion to Bishop would be the Amalthi Amalthia support character of Obitas. He's a uh -huh. scratchy character. Uh, that's not a silly idea. And I all and it counts as an activation, so you can bump him up to something. Yep. I will that. take. Uh, so what do we got? We've got a medical officer. What do we yeah, need? What, what is um, Obitas? Is engineering. Engine? Uh, Obitas is a. Uh, he is skilled uh, in small science. craft. Propulsion theory and quantum sli slipstream drive. I'm a pilot guy. Uh, Darval is your pilot. Yeah. Uh, Scrim is your medical. Captain is captain. So a dedicated engineer would be good. All right. I will take. Uh, I'll take free pack along. Take free pack. I'm sure there's a rule of acquisition for this, but I'm failing to remember what number it is. Oh, uh, I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> they all apply for another. All right. So. All right. So. so let me go and find the rules for activation. Uh, 133, 134, I think. Um, but while you're doing that, oh, this also means Scrim gets bumped up as well. Or no, Scrim is a full character, I think. Yeah, yep. Scrim is a full character. All right. It might be Tuzon that gets upgraded. Let me just quickly glance at his yeah, stats. I think I made him as a full character. 
Uh, 56. Yeah, he looks full. Yeah, 16. Yeah, he's full. Okay, so I think it is just uh, Obidus that gets upgraded here. All right. So, uh, while that's going on, we jump forward a few hours with you all arriving on the bridge of the USS Venus. And uh, very much like the universe class and everything that is associated with it, uh, the style of this bridge is significantly different than what you're used to. I hate to use the word futuristic, but I think it applies here. Uh, we're dealing with wider open spaces. You're dealing with hollow displays like the kind you would see on the bridge of the Amalfia. Uh, all of the consoles are rigged such that you could literally sit at any position and handle what you need to. Um, and for the moment, the Venus is currently sitting in the Leviathan's shuttle bay or whatever the hell we're going to call it. And specifically between Obidus, Freepak, and Darval, um, you have found the quote-unquote subroutine or algorithm that, best you can tell, uh, you push a button, it interacts with the portal planet, and then you go through to the other side. All right, ears. Uh, I can uh, I can get this thing to open up, uh, but it's your job to not to fly us into the side of it. All right. I'm fully aware of my responsibilities in ensuring a safe and uh, smooth passage. However, these controls are still unfamiliar to me, so I would recommend that you find a chair, manifest a seatbelt, and buckle it up. You hear? Heard him? Let's get around here, guys. <laughs> All right. So, you know, there's a strap-in sequence as everybody gets comfortable. And, uh, yeah, Tuzlod, at this point, it is just your call to give the order to launch and then push the button. All right, everybody. We don't know what's on the other side. Let's go find out. Darval, whenever you're ready. Yes, Captain. Departing, I am opening... I believe I'm opening the cargo or the shuttle bay's doors and setting course out at one quarter impulse. All right. Because I find it funny. Uh, control and con, please. Difficulty one. One, you would be hard pressed to hit the side of this hangar bay. You'd have to do it intentionally. Well, it's been it known is... to happen, Free Pack. We'll go with the punches. Control plus con. Uh, let's see. Formation maneuvers as a focus? You've got a focus. Yeah, I figured as much. See, you're fine. You're fine. Wow. In fact, you succeeded so well, you have two floating oh. moment. No, one floating momentum. Uh. <clears throat> Can I just uh, spend that one momentum to make it look just to bring it within like a meter of colliding with the top or bottom of the bay and then just look at um chief free pack and go apologies i have now get, regained control of this of the starship <laughs> i like it uh, i'm reconsidering i my only go back <laughs> <laughs> nope you're stuck let's go <laughs> all right so the, uh... oh, sorry, wrong lever off there why do we even have but yeah so uh yeah Darval, you fly the uss venus on out uh do you push the button i push the button as soon as we clear cool i need uh and one person can assist on this uh so probably free pack or obitus uh, I need a control and con from... Dar well, let's make it a daring and con for Darval. Okay. Um, from Obidus or Free Pack, it would be... Well, from Obidus, it would be a daring and science. From Free Pack, it would be a daring engineering. Um, Obidus has a focus. Free Pack, I'm not sure if you do. I'm quickly looking at your list here. I've got um, war core mechanics. Yeah, daring and science isn't too bad. Yeah, I would say you have a focus as well, Free Pack. Um, the Venus will also assist you with its engines and engineering. And the difficulty here is going to be a four. Right. Uh, so I have six momentum. 
Yes. I will, um, just because I have the bold con talent, I will take it with threat. So okay. an extra dice with threat. Uh, my, I'm at nine. About. I'm at nine five for engineering. Uh, I have, that's better than me. I'm only at eight three. Well, the good news is you already have the requisite four, so whoever assists just doesn't have to roll a complication. Look at that. No complications there. So you get uh, you get one momentum, which is floating. And yeah, uh, so what happens, uh, Darval, you push the shiny red button and immediately this uh, almost like beam of light emits from the Venus's deflector array. And at the same time, uh, you would detect a power surge coming from the portal planet. And the energy from the planet and the energy from the deflector array uh, collide in space before the Venus and open a tear in reality. And without, you know, any prompting, the ship begins to slide in. Uh, and as it does, there's a violent shift where had you not buckled in, you probably would have been thrown about the bridge. Um, but you go through this pretty much unscathed, and you emerge out into what looks to be, uh, at least as sensors are detecting, an almost mirror copy of the system you just left with several key differences. Um, the first being that there is no Leviathan, there is no Amalthea, there is no other, you know, Gamma Vanguard ships. And there's also a problem. And Obidus... I'm going to let you flavor this since you're the science officer here. But uh, you all end up in a bit of space that looks uh, a little bit like this. And you might recognize those ships from before. And if not, I can remind you. Oh, I uh, remember. They're the uh, spine people. Uh, just to double check, we have actually moved to a different universe, right? Best you can tell. When you said it was mirror, oh, no, no, that was sort of in is... character to the others. Oh. Oh. Yes, Captain, we appear to have achieved the, or yes, Obatus, we have appeared to achieve uh, dimensional transit without any uh, complications for a change. Which means that those, he says, pointing at the destroyers on the view screen, don't know to leave us alone. Oh. Most likely not. And open us all sort of get ready for evasive maneuvers. So when you when you said it was a, a mirrored, do you actually mean it was flipped or just kind of a carbon copy? Uh, it is almost a carbon copy. So is there a gateway planet? There is. It looks almost from orbit. Uh, well, you're not quite in orbit, but if you were to look. Uh, on the view screen, it looks to be about the same sort of planet that uh, the one you just left behind is. Who wants to bet these are the reason why the Leviathan had a few holes in it? I find that unlikely, considering that we were, as a fleet, we were able to dispatch a few of these with decent success. Yeah. However, By the way, our shields are up, right? Not. Uh, yeah. Putting them up now, Captain. Uh, structural integrity is nominal. The gateway has not damaged us. No wall breaches. Uh, reminder, I'm the ensign. No, you got field promoted. <laughs> they have Captain Tuzon's yet. first away mission, and he gets outranked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get too hasty. Let's open a channel and see if they hit, uh, respond. Opening a channel. All right. So, what do you say when the channel is opened? Unidentified vessel. This is the USS Venus. Uh, we mean you no harm. We've been displaced. Okay. So, there is a pause. And for probably about two to three minutes you're starting to wonder what are they doing because you know usually you can detect if they've received a signal and you can confirm that they are receiving um eventually a reply does come uh audio only and the reply is 
I'm going to try to do a voice here. It's been a while since I've used it, though. Um, you Federation types, we thought we destroyed all of you. Very well, we will continue to do our grand design. And uh, the channel cuts, and you would detect that all four destroyers are powering weapons. Uh, figures, they're French. Let's kill them. <laughs> do we... Yep. Uh, Obertus will send the Venus into a dive. Okay. Do we know for sure this is the same universe these Venus came from? Or if we're just... Uh... We'll find out. Judging by their response, it seems so. Well, if these, uh, if if uh, something the size of the, the Leviathan was just damaged by these, these spine ships are much more uh, dangerous than they mean in our own universe. And oh, yes, for... uh, I'm not telling you this is what you should do, but this is where is the GM. I would be ris remiss if I didn't remind you that there is a mechanic to flee combat. Uh, if you were, if you judge it necessary. Yeah. I mean, that that's what I was thinking too, because like, we're, we're a small frigate, the, and we know how powerful these things can be. That is, that is true. Well, that's up to the captain. I shall pilot the ship as best I can. Uh, if anyone's taking votes here, uh, I definitely vote for run. Just make note of that, please, someone... Well, Captain, uh, it is the player's turn, so you guys can act as you wish. Evasive maneuvers don't fire until we've been fired upon. All right. Very well. So, so Darval, you're uh, going to do Actually, a... which station am I at? Uh, you're at science. Cool. Uh, science. Evasive. So that would be one of my roles. Yep. Trying to pull it up. PDF is being slow. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Plot course chart hazard. No. I believe it's a daring con, but let's yeah, It's a that. the Sound PDF the reference sheet says control con with a difficulty of one. Ah. Ah, here we are. Uh yep, yeah, control con difficulty one. I can do that. Huh, cause in the PDF I have it says it's a daring con. Was that eroded? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just using the reference sheet on that you have on roll twenty. Let's go with daring con because I'm inclined to agree the PDF I have. Because I think this is the eroded copy. That's fair. Uh, the difficulty awesome. is still a one, uh, and the Venus will assist you with a structure con. And this does require one power, but all attacks made against the Venus and all attacks made by the Venus uh, increase in difficulty by one. So I'll okay. subtract off that power. All right, so uh, with three successes, is someone grabbing the Venus? I have the Venus Jeep. What is the engine's? Uh, structure Con. Structure Con. Never mind. Structure. Uh, yes. Ooh. All right, so uh, that is three floating momentum. Uh, I would say that do you have, I'm trying to remember what talent it is. Because I know there's a talent that is, I think it's precise evasion. Um, I have precision maneuvering, but that's not quite it, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, well, uh, with the yeah. three floating, I will say you could spend two of it to create an advantage. I would like. I think that would be a good idea. Uh, let's spend two to create the advantage, um, where say the quantum distortions caused by the rift have mucked up their uh, sensors or their targeting systems, if that could work. Sure. Uh, I will say that that will persist until the end of the first round. So Fair for enough. this first round, between that advantage and your evasive maneuvers, uh, just to hit you with their beam weapons, that's a difficulty four. If they fire torps, that's a difficulty five. And yeah, uh, with that handled, we're going to go to uh, the unknown vessels, whoever they belong to. You haven't found out quite what this species is yet. In fact, that audio message you got was the first time anyone had heard anything. Um, and what's going to happen yeah. is... Yeah, like in the past, they just sort of screeched at us. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, what's going to happen is uh, Destroyer D over here is just going to scan for weakness. And with a 3, I believe it succeeds. So you would detect that Destroyer D has sort of scanned for weakness and is potentially uh, locked onto you. And I will make a note of that. Boop. Uh, is, is anyone on the communications and internal systems? Position? That would be me. Uh, yeah, free pack is that. All right, so... Let's see, how the navigation, communication... Uh, sensors taken? Uh, you are sensors. Obidus is sensors. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I couldn't find a science station, so. Yeah, uh, it comes back around to your players because it, you know, bounces back and forth between player and NPC. So we've already used our navigation to evasive move, uh, give us evasive maneuvers. So we can't really. Uh, could we use some extra momentum to take another no, no, um, navigation thing to start moving away from these guys? Yeah, you know, it's worth going over because again, it, it has been a little bit. So. Uh, Basically, the way Starship Combat works is uh, whoever is at that station, Helm in this instance, takes their action, no difficulty increase. Someone else can also take a Helm action, but the difficulty for them goes up by one. And if it's the same person, so say, for example, if you're tactical, uh, you fire once and then you're told to fire again on the same round then your difficulty goes up by two because it's the same station and the same action. But if it's just someone else at a different station doing the same action, it's just a plus one difficulty. And I have, as the captain, I have decisive leadership. So uh, if I uh, do the assist task, we can attain the initiative for zero as well as I have quick action. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, maybe if I... Well, that's a question. Are we fighting or are we running? I believe we're running. All right, well, running until I... we are fought. We have to fight. Maybe if I use the sensors to do a task at a different station and I do the plot course thing from navigation, because that'll reduce the difficulty of the helm's next go, which will probably be to evade. All right. Sure, let's do it. Uh, for you, that would be a reason and con. And the Venus will assist you with a computers and con. The difficulty here is a three. And because I'm seeing... Increased to four. Uh, actually, no, because I'm seeing uh, that Helm and Navigator have been split. Uh, a Navigator is a distinctive separate role. So it still stays a difficulty of three. Yeah, useful. Does the ship assist with navigator rolls? Uh, computer's con for the ship. Come on. Uh, where did I put that sheet? All right, so no help from the Venus. Use one of our momentum to oh, give yourself a third die. Sorry, over oh, the sheet was hidden behind a thing. Uh, let's, mm, yeah, we've got a fair amount of momentum. I'll spend three momentum to get two extra dice. Uh, I don't think I've got any focuses, though. I don't think this counts as a small craft. Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, what did you do to upgrade him, though, out of curiosity? I uh, gave him structural engineering as a focus. Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah, and the problem is it's a difficulty three, which means Obidus, you know, you're doing your best to try and plot a optimal route that gets you out of this sort of predicament. Uh, unfortunately, um, either because you're just unfamiliar with the advanced nature of these sensors or the same sort of uh, sensor obscuring effect that is protecting you. Uh, either way, the end result is you're unable to get a positive lock on a suitable course. Alrighty. All right. 
So up next is uh, Destroyer C, and Destroyer C is also going to scan for weakness. And with that, it also locks on. And that is Destroyer C's turn. It comes back around to the Venus. I'm going to ready a task, use the ready task, to ready a regenerate shields for if we get uh, shot at. Okay. So I'm going to start preloading uh, subsidiary power into uh, a junction ready to f f shunt that into shield. And do you want that to take that immediately after shields have taken damage, or do you want to wait until it is your turn again to activate that? Uh, immediately after it takes, uh, we take damage. Noted. All right. And with that, it comes around to Destroyer A, and you can probably guess what it's doing. And it, too, locks on to you. And it rolls back around to the players. Uh, I'm thinking maybe we hit the emergency warp jump button. Sticking the same thing. Let's get out of here. I'm in favor of such an action. So can I? The, how does like the uh, direct assist or the direct? Can I direct and, and that's assisting? Yeah. So the way direct works is you tell someone to do something, a single task, and then you assist with a presence command. And they do whatever the normal task would be. Um, you can only do it once per scene unless you have a talent otherwise. Um, but you could use them, the direct action, to warp away. And uh, the way warping away uh, works in this system is you would do a control and con with a difficulty of one overall from evasive. And the ship would assist with engines con. And what it matters is how much power you spend is how fast you escape. And in order to catch you, the enemy has to spend more power than the fleeing ship does. So, for example, if you spend five power, all the enemy has to do is spend six power to catch you. We're currently sitting at ten power, ten Captain. Power. Mm -hmm. All right. Daraval, let's get out of here. Warp us out. I think we'll use five power. And I also have like decisive leadership, so I can uh, we can do retain initiative if need be. Understood, Captain. And I do presence command, you said? Presence command for your assist. Yep. And Darval, you're doing a uh, control and con. Uh, normally this would be a difficulty one, but I'm going to spend some threat and let's make it a difficulty three. Okay, then I will give you another point of threat to take another dice. Cool. The Venus is assisting with what? Uh, engine's gone. My focus crisis management, okay. let, lead by example, starship operations, would any of those apply? Yeah, I'd let one apply. All right, you're at the three successes, four successes you need, so you go up to four momentum. And again, I want to make sure I heard correctly. You are spending five power. That's correct. All right. I would, I would choose five, five power because we can regain. Okay. All right. So what happens is on your turn, uh, you give the order to Zon to, uh, you know, warp a, warp the hell out of there. Uh, the Venus does sort of turn and bank and warp away, which does break the target lock. However, that's useful. Uh, however, what happens is as you're warping, the ships all jump to warp and are rapidly catching up to you. Uh, Captain, they are, I guess. Captain, they are still closing at us on us. So let me, uh, uh, let me put you. You're like here now, and these two are like here. All right. Since I said we get to, it says when you pay two momentum to keep the initiative, the cost to keep the initiative is reduced to zero. So we'll be able to retain the initiative. Since they are in a pursuit course, uh, we can defend ourselves. So I would arm torpedo. Okay. Yeah, they want to like try dro dropping a spread behind us, just sort of scramble this as a smoke screen. We 
sort of bank off in a different direction. That's the idea. All right. Okay. So, so. Maybe, maybe we can, like, I don't know, swerve close to the sun as we go past, uh, sort of mess with their senses, and then they continue on in a, the direction they think we've gone, and then we hide behind the planet or something. Mm-hmm. Works for me. It didn't work for Kirk. He ended up in the 20th century. Yeah, details. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, the way I'm going to rule this is whoever wants to actually fire the torpedoes, um, if it's anyone who's already acted, it's an increased difficulty for you. Um, so this might be a time for a certain doctor or, uh, actually, yeah, uh, I think the doctor is the only one who hasn't gone yet. (laughs) Does my task count since it's a ready action? I haven't actually taken it. Um, I would say yes, you have technically, basically it's like D&D, you've held your action, so it's not like you can act again, unfortunately. Like, like I couldn't, like, give up that ready to action in order to take another one, and, like, so that one never happens. Right, Even and unfortunately get... that's kind of the peril of readying an action, is you right. kind of lock yourself in. All right. Um, so, uh, again, you know, someone else can, you know, fire and get, you know, take another turn. It's just at an increased difficulty. But let's break it down. So, firing a torpedo normally is difficulty three, and there is a threat cost associated with it. Uh, I get one threat for you guys firing torpedoes. Um, you have plus one difficulty from evasive maneuvers. And then, uh, if one of you were to act again, that would be an additional plus one difficulty. So you're either looking at a four difficulty for the good doctor or a five difficulty from anyone else. Um, Now, in order to pull off what I think you want to pull off, it will require a salvo. And a salvo uh, has its own benefits here. But what really matters is that it gives me three threat instead of just the one. And it's uh, what we were going to have to do. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And yes, Chester, uh, on your part, it is a control security, and the Venus would assist you with a weapon security. How about, I don't, my control security isn't that bad. And you do have five momentum at the moment. And the Venus does assist you. Yep, uh, I'll buy, spend three momentum, get two extra dice. Okay. All right. Is the doctor's like, I'm a... <laughs> I'm a doctor, not a weapons specialist. That's that, the is other a ta- that is a talent. No available for I've never done this before. First time for everything. Do you, do you have that talent, Prayer? Oh. I don't know, Prayer, no. So that is three successes. Um, you do need, four. need four. So do you want to spend fancy. determination to reroll those zeros? Yeah, I'm looking. Never give up. Smart, not hard. Make do with what you have. I am. I, I would say any of those yeah. could apply to this situation. He's a... <laughs> Never done this before, but I have to do it now. Right, and you can roll as many dice as you wish. Doesn't have to be just the zeros. Uh, another thing I want to re-roll the successes. That'd be that'd be one more success. That'd bring That's us up to the need. four. So what happens from a narrative perspective, uh you do. Uh you bank towards the sun, and of course the unknown destroyers follow in your wake. And you, almost similar to an episode of DS9, uh, you almost skim the surface of the sun, um, you know, thanks to metaphasic shielding, it's not really an issue. Um, But what matters is you fire a a volley of photon torpedoes, and as they detonate, the sun lets out a giant blast of uh, basically a solar flare or a solar eruption uh, that obscures you from view, both visually and pretty much to every conceivable known sensor out there. Um, and you are able try, to... Try to see something through 60 bajillion degree plasma. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happens is you are able to warp out at a different angle than when you went in, such that when the 
uh, the plume subsides. Uh, you guys have made it all the way out to the Oort Cloud before the aliens, whoever and whatever they are, are more aware. So you're out of combat. Uh, you are currently in the Oort Cloud of the system. And what would you guys like to do? I'm thinking, bow down and like see if we can like detect anything that looks like a Federation signal on like the long range sensors. Sure. Exactly what I was going to suggest. Let's see if we can find Federation signals nearby so we are in enemy territory. All right. So, Opetus, I need you to roll me a control and a science, please. Actually, no, I think it's a reason science. Yep, it's been a while. Uh, so it is a reason science for Opetus, and the uh, ship will be assisting you with a sensor science. And because you have advanced sensors, the difficulty on this is only a one. All right, going to grab a momentum for a third die because I don't have any focuses. Okay. Yeah, we both rolled and we both rolled fails. Both rolled 14s. <laughs> One success. All right. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, I'm going to let this succeed at cost, but there will be a complication. And uh, what, uh, what... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, just get, get going. I, I think I know what the complication will be. So, uh, Obidus, you scan, and you uh, you realize that, actually, yeah, there are Federation si uh, signals out here. A lot of them, actually. And as you look at the sensor readings, you realize that, you know, normally an Oort cloud is just a bunch of uh, gases and rocks and, you know, things that don't quite make their way to an asteroid belt or a planet or things of that nature. So what you thought was, you know, just ambient sort of space stuff that's not space stuff those are wrecked holes of federation ships and there's a lot of them Ooh. i'd recommend uh we sweep some of those up into the cargo bay and compare the quantum signatures of those ships with this one to make sure we're actually in the the correct other side because it'd be really embarrassing if we just ran away from a bunch of guys who could have whipped because we were in a bad spaceship uh, 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 this, this does not look good. This, uh, um... Yeah, like, um... Are we picking up any light? Yeah, Wolf 359 left larger pieces than this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the complication is, uh, on the view screen, a, uh, deck plating that says USS Thunderchild floats by. <laughs> because, Aww. of course. Because it's not an STA game unless you blow up the Thunderchild every other session. In, in this and every other universe, Thunderchild falls to the aliens. Mm -hmm. uh, I does Obidus want to scan for the quantum signature? Or should I? I've got metallurgy. Probably you. Right. So free pack, you're going to be rolling me a. I would say this would probably be an insight uh, plus engineering. Your metallurgy focus would apply. Uh, difficulty on this is a two. And two is what you get. So yes, you are able to confirm that the quantum signatures match. You are where you're supposed to be. Uh, um, uh, ooh, unfortunately, Captain, we are in the right place. This Wish I wasn't here, but this is where we are. And these guys mean business. This is, this is more than like a handful of fleets worth it. This is, I, how do you, like, I don't even, ah! So... Even though we're in the most uh, a ship that's what three hundred years more advanced than anything else in the fleet, these guys could rip us apart like we were in, a, in an well, old Earth space shuttle. Unless this Federation somehow built a fleet of derelicts and then built all their tech into one ship, yeah, unfortunately. Which means we absolutely positively cannot let those guys get a hold of the portal planets and get into our universe because they will nothing will stand it i mean does raise the question like it looks like this like this universe is equivalent to the federation made a last stand here for some reason perhaps there perhaps the ship the uss leviathan was not meant as a ship in distress but instead as a time caps or a time capsule perhaps 
or memories of a lost civilization. Maybe mm. it was sent as a warning. Yeah, pretty expensive warning. Or perhaps it was sent as a defense. Uh, or perhaps it, it was, was their last stand. It was their last stand. Or they were trying to escape and no one made it out alive because of those energy sucking things. Regardless, well, yeah. there were no bodies either. But well, we don't know what happens when energy sucking things get to a body. For well, either way, we still need to figure out how to, like, do whatever it is the planet needs to do to siphon energy. I have a, a, the the suspicion that air gateway planet is somehow linked to this gateway planet, and per perhaps. All those hall breaches we saw on the Leviathan led to a mass evacuation of the ship using the gateway. They could have connected, remotely connected to the gateway the way we did, and warped everyone off of the ship. Actually, that's not a. Actually, that's a good point. Actually, because we know this thing can do pinpoint warping of individuals. Maybe up to fifty thousand light years. Yeah, maybe they decided that a series of individual warping was better than trying to warp the entire ship. And then our uh, work with the ship in distress and brought it to us. Yeah. Regardless, Captain, our mission parameters, I believe, have changed. We should not be attempting to bring the Leviathan back to this universe. Yeah. I would agree. But either way, I guess we need to sneak back into system and take a look at that plant. So we need to either get home or make sure nothing from this universe gets back home. Uh, with the small addendum there that we actually do. So nothing but us. Right? Right? Everyone in the in accord there? I, I have a bar I'd like to get back to. We, I shall... We shall make a best effort attempt. However, the needs of the many do outweigh the needs of the few. And in this instance, we are the few. Think about the many patrons that will not have a bartender. I'm just thinking of them, you know. What? I selflessly. You didn't think this was a suicide mission? I thought this was a suicide mission. She free pack. Um, I, in my short time knowing her, Ensign Leck has proven herself to be a very capable barmaid, barmaiden and has excelled in mixology as well as pleasing customers. Yeah, I know where you're going, and that's not in her contract. That's I, There's a specific footnote. She doesn't get the bar. That, don't even think about it. We're but getting she, back. There, does that contract still exist? If, yeah, it's, I've, got it, I've got copies here in this universe. I carry it wherever I go. Okay, It's a smart thing to do. So, Until does that right. make you the first Ferengi to have a cross-universe legal agreement? Knowing some of the stuff some other people get up to uh, with, a, with uh, the Grand Neg is probably not. Well, uh, they don't seem to have spotted us yet. Let's see if we can get back into the system without raising any alarms. Captain, perhaps... But we don't we know if the planet somehow... has any... Sorry. Uh, we don't know if the planet has any power. That's a good point. Can, can, um, can we see anything from out here? Uh, I uh, would say question, no, but... Oh, go question ahead. to the DM. Um, so at the risk of engaging recursion, mm -hmm. does our small craft have smaller craft on board? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it, it's one of those things where even you know the, the normal Callistos you guys have, they have their own shuttles and their own worker bees because they are legitimate, like, full equipped starships. Um but uh, because you might have missed this detail or I may have omitted it, um, with all the Federation debris out here, there might be an intact computer core. That's a point, actually, because the universe classes was completely shot. If there's something here we can salvage, that might give us some information to work with. And the, the longer we take, the more um, chance of them leaving Find I mean, the, find they're, they're gonna realize we gave them the slip at some point. I, I wonder if there's any thing we could use here to make a distraction as well. Signal transponders, things like that. 
Mm. I mean, like, Let's... activate a cloud of transponders in the Oort cloud, it'd take them hours at least to sort through them all. We could find a transponder, invert the tractor beam, and shoot a transponder away from us, and then activate it. We could even do a probe. We wouldn't yeah, even need to find better, a like, Yeah, stick a transponder on a probe, give it a warp jump kick, and it'll look like an escaping ship. I could, I could modify the sensor profile to look like the, uh, the Cestus. If, hmm. if we can program a probe to do kind of a, a loop around the far side, it would draw them away from us. All right. I'll we'll work on that. In the meantime, let's start scanning this debris field for something that looks like a computer core. All right. With so, your permission, Captain. I'll start so modifying. Start scanning. We Go also have to regain our power so that if we jump away again, we have it. Sounds good. All right, I'll regain power and then start modifying a probe. So, uh, scanning this debris field is going to be a reason science, again, assisted by the sensors science of the Venus. And uh, this would normally be a difficulty five, but your advanced sensors kick that down to a four. Is it a one-person job, or could someone else... Uh, I would say it is probably a one-person job, because, you know, there's only so much sensor bandwidth, and you're already... Probably someone other than me, because my reason and science are terrible. Obitus should have a uh, Obitus should have a four in science. Uh, he's got a three. Oh, that's right. I made him. Why does he have a Why four in con? Four Those are reversed. Con. Okay. There we go. That's fixed. <clears throat> Isn't he the science officer? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say he is specifically designed to be a science officer. Why was? <laughs> yeah, it's he likes to spy on his days off. Yeah. Just trans- he's got high presence instead of reason. Now that is correct, yes. Okay, He's cool. an imposing individual. Alright, so what what was the task again? Reason science, difficulty three? Difficulty four, and this ship is assisting with sensor science. Alrighty. Uh, is the four uh, taking into account the advanced sensors? Yes, it would normally be a difficulty five. Gotcha. We also have the high resolution sensors, so if we, we get a bonus... Uh, no. Let's see. The vessel sensors can gain large amounts of accurate data, though they are extremely sensitive. While the vessel is not in combat, any successful task that is assisted by the ship sensors gains one bonus moment. Mm-hmm. Which basically means you can ask questions. Well, I think I'm going to have to spend some trick because we've only got the one momentum. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's give it a go. So spending momentum to get a third die. Mm-hmm. Sensor science for the ship. Yep. A oh, bit of a hail mary. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Yep, and that is a complication. He doesn't have well, a value, does he? Ah, uh, no. Then uh, what's going to happen is with only one success and a complication on the board, uh, Obidus, you are scanning maybe a little bit too uh, too much energy is going into those scans, and you would detect that the uh, alien ships have changed direction and they are headed in your general direction. Uh, Captain, they spotted us. That was the exact opposite of what you were supposed to do, Obidus, but we will make do with what we got. Free pack, have we regained energy? Uh, I believe so, Captain. Then, considering we're being pursued, let's stay in the aurora cloud where we can hide with debris, but be prepared to fire. May I make a suggestion, Captain? Go ahead. Uh pretty good at these duck and runs back when I was racing. Uh, We could shift into a low power mode, shutting down non-essential systems, fire off a probe emitting a false sensor signal away from us. Make it kind of look like we warp in the other direction. 
I like that idea, but it's also risky. If we power down everything, we won't be able to do a quick. Yeah. And it will definitely be a case of like, we might be able to fool them with the same trick twice, but. Well, the other alternative, I mean, you want to hide better to hide the best we can. I mean, what do you want to do? Hide in these rocks with full power and let them pick up one air signal. And I guess we're just going to pretend to be a derelict and then maybe sneak in on a shuttle or something. It is our best option. All right. Captain. <clears throat> yes. Perhaps as we act as a derelict, we could release several uh, photon torpedoes dropped as mines and create a very dangerous debris field for them to search. I like the idea of making it difficult. And if we could separate them from being all four together, they might be easier to take out. All right. So there's a lot going on here. So first things first, uh, we need to see how successful uh, Chief Freepak is at uh, powering things down and more or less playing Cold War submarine games with uh, the Venus and the other ships. So, Freepak, I need you to do a Daring Engineering. The difficulty on this is going to be a 3. And the uh, Venus will assist you with engines and engineering. I'd like to spend a determination to get an extra die. Okay. And that determination for the extra die automatically counts as a 1, so you already have two successes. Um, also I have seek advantage, so when I spend a determination for a bonus d20, I can re-roll a d20 if necessary. Very nice. Nice. And yeah, that is... Oh, uh, I, I meant to roll three. Well, you I get that because determination, a... the determination dice automatically counts as a one, so you, you already have uh, four successes. So yeah, I just need to see an engine, an engines engineering for the sh the ship, please, and then oh, uh, I can, I see can how much more you guys get. Engines plus engineering. Nope. Yeah. Nope. I need to stop rolling for the ship. I've rolled zeros every time the last couple of times. Well, I, I rolled a zero too. So. All right. Yeah. So you just get the one momentum, which is your momentum count at the moment. And yeah, a uh, free pack, since you, uh, you've done this sort of thing before. You power everything down. You get a probe going in the opposite direction to uh, sort of obfuscate uh, which signal is you. Then the question becomes, uh, who's laying the minefield? I mean, Scrim did a good job before. Yeah, Scrim did all right. I have a decent... Um, control security score my control security is 13 yeah mine yeah. too let's have scrim mine's 12 it. yeah let's uh let's have scrim do it because i like to keep jester involved <laughs> the problem being the doc yep. all right Uh, so yeah, let's see. This will be a difficulty three. Uh, control security from Scrim and a weapon security from the ship. I'm going to buy one extra dice with threat. Just because okay. bad guys are coming, you want to give the GM as much threat. Oh well. It's getting pretty familiar with these consoles. Uh, let's see. It should be this one here. All right. Nice. Arming all these torpedoes. There, my three success. Yeah, three's all you need. So if the ship rolls anything, you guys get momentum. Okay. And that was weapon security. Uh, security. Security. Nope. Right. So no, no momentum, but you still succeed. So scram what you do. Uh, is you seed the derelicts and the debris fields with a few photon torpedoes. 
Uh, if the alien vessels get anywhere close, uh, do you want them to detonate immediately, or do you want them to remain and wait for an activation signal? Definite activation signal. Activation signal. Noted. I'm going to um, program them so they activate when they are scanned. Okay. And they get in there and they scan for, scan for us. Yeah, that can happen. All right. <laughs> So, uh, narratively, what happens is all this ha as all this goes down, the bridge lights dim uh, and go to what is essentially blue alert, because as far as I could tell, blue alert is what you go to uh, if you're quote unquote under cloak or making planet fall. There, there's a lot of things blue does, but, uh, you know, you go to blue alert and uh, you wait. And as you wait, the alien ships get closer and closer and closer. Uh, and eventually they enter the Oort cloud and begin scanning, and I get to roll for them. So let's see how well they do. 20. I'll spend some threat to give them an additional dice. Well, uh, with those rolls, uh, what happens is the four alien ships... Uh, do kind of get unnervingly close to you guys. But after a tense moment where you think they might have found you, they move on uh, off towards the direction of wherever Freepak followed or fired the uh, sort of probe fake out. Oh, I felt that one in my lobes. They always get just a little too close when I use that trick. Regardless, it was a very effective trick. I shall add that to my playbook. It's always good to add more tricks to your playbook. All right. Uh, what, what next, Captain? Well, I personally would like to see if we can find any survivors from these ships, but we might not have the time. Um, let's... See if we can sneak back towards the gate planet and run an analysis to see if there's power on the planet. Captain, we wouldn't be giving up the opportunity to find anything of use in the debris field. If we head back to the planet, it's unlikely we'll be able to make it back out here before we have to he before we can head home, assuming we can. This is true, but I don't personally want to be in this cloud with the um, lovely ships that greeted us. Understandable. Setting a course Captain. back. Yes, free pack. What if we follow the ore cloud around where we are to the other side of the star, keeping it between us and the other ships? I mean, that would take the better part of two centuries, I'd imagine. Oh, no, an impulse? Nah. No, impulse cheats. Uh, impulse is one-third light speed, so uh, it wouldn't take that long. All right. Uh, actually, flying there, I thought this was just like orbiting round you are talking about. Mm -hmm. How close are the destroyers? Can we power up without getting there? At the moment, they are in combat terms. They are at long range. Anything above one eighth impulse will be detected at this current range, Captain. Assuming their sensor fidelity is similar to that of Federation standard. Well, remember we're in the future, so to say. So they probably have been better than what we currently. One sixteenth, then. Let's wait for them to get a little further away, and then we'll proceed around on the York road. Or cloud. Okay. So, as you guys wait, uh, it is a little bit unnerving because it is a lot of uh, anxious waiting around to see what happens. Uh, the good news, though, is that uh, the ships do begin to move off. Uh, they are still, you know, within system. So if you do, I don't know, overpower the sensors or put too much juice into engines, they'll probably find you again. But you're reasonably certain that uh, you could power up slightly and make your way around the Oort cloud uh, without issue. 
keeping our power uh, power signals nominal and minimal, Captain. All right, let's proceed. A quiet running. Yes, sir. Proceeding a silent running. And as you're uh, as you're going, I need to know: uh, Are you still scanning for survivors, computer cores, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? I would say passive scans, like as we go, just kind of scan what's around us slowly. Okay. Then what I'm going to say then is your advanced sensor suites and your high resolution sensors would not be active, which means that this would be a difficulty for reason science assisted by the ship's sensors science. And I'll spend some thread here to make the complication range a 17 to 20. And you can probably guess what the complication would be. Yeah, I'm Makes not touching sense. that test. <laughs> it would be Bishop's task. Oh, right. So it's um, reason science again? Mm-hmm. I'd say my reason science is a 12, otherwise I would assist. Can I give him my determination? I mean, 12 is actually better than mine. My reason science is 11. I would say yes. Uh, as captain, you could give him your determination. Even though he doesn't have a value, you could still give him the determination to spend. I would like that. I'd like to get those two guaranteed successes. Then I will give you my determination as Ooh. captain. So spend Do I have to... Thing? Give a value for giving determination? No, not as far as, as I'm aware, you don't have to. Yeah, no, not as the captain. All right, so that'll just be reason science and rolling one die. Uh, rolling two dice. And one oh, of those, I'm Yeah, the determination dice counts as your third dice, but it automatically counts as a one. Oh, okay, cool. So you could still spend momentum or threat to buy more dice, but you are on your fourth die, is what that means. Yeah, so it'll just be three. Okay. Well, two and then... Two and then the one automatic, yeah. All right, well, that's the four you need. Uh, so if someone wants to see if you generate momentum with the ship. I can do that. Hey, hey, all right. Momentum. You're up to two. So yeah, Obidus, uh, good news. You find not only a computer core, but you do it in a manner that does not alert the aliens to your presence. And by all rights, this computer core is wholly intact. Captain, I am adjusting the ship's yaw and pitch and roll. And opening up shuttle bay one with a bit of precision maneuvering, we should be able to uh, bring the computer core into the ship without using the tractor beam. All right, nice and slow, Deval. I've been doing nothing but since I've got here. All right. So uh, I'm not going to have you guys roll. Well, you could use momentum here. Uh, why don't you do a control and con difficulty two, and the uh, ship will assist you with a uh, in engines con. Now, um, can I utilize my precision maneuvers? Uh, reduce difficulty task by one when attempting a task that requires precise maneuvering. Yeah, that would apply. So the difficulty would become a one. Right. One momentum. Very nice. Someone wants to get uh, engines con for the ship. I'll get it. Have I lost sound? Nope. Nope, I can hear you. Okay. Cool. Oh, come uh, on. I'm going to take threat for that complication. So, cool. uh, you know, you bring the computer core into your shuttle bay, and you can confirm that, again, uh, your maneuvering was such that uh, the aliens have not noticed your presence. 
Maneuver complete, Captain. Resuming course all around the mulberry bush, as my flight leader used to say. Nicely how done, Darval. How many people are on the ship? Is it just like pretty much the bridge crew, or do we have like a bunch of... I, I would say you've got probably the same complement you would have on a Callisto, which means to say probably 20, 30 people. So yeah, it's basically a skeleton crew. Just thinking, Captain, if we concentrate all our staff in the essential areas and vacuum the rest of the ship, reduce it might reduce our power signature and stuff like that. We could even put people in environmental suits and just jettison the entire atmosphere. I don't like the idea of having no atmosphere, but rerouting people into uh, away from non-essential areas and any way that we can reduce that signature is a good idea. All right. <clears throat> oh, muted myself there. Uh, so my next question is, what are you guys doing with the computer core? Uh, I think we want to like sort of wrap this up, seal it, and uh, sort of save it, save looking at it for when we get back. I don't know. It could have information that would help us currently. Uh, good point. Uh, how much power would it take to activate it? Uh, I would say it would require uh, one power in game, a uh, game mechanics terms. And basically what that means is that if you roll a complication on the task associated with the core, uh, you will once again beacon yourself. What would be the, the role? I've the, got diagnostics. That's the role, I would say, would be a daring engineering. Um, probably difficulty four. And the ship would not assist you, but someone else could assist you. All right. What if I do the role with Obidus assisting and we spend some momentum or give him some threat? I've got a, a, a metal talent here that lets me um, roll challenge die to get rid of any threat costs that I uh, spend. That's a nifty talent. So what do you, what do you say? Dump, to dump the computer core. I like the idea of being able to look into the computer core to see if there's any information to help us. I, I would agree. Oh, do we not have any any momentum? You should have two at the moment. They just disappeared from me. Oh, uh, because McCall uh, disappeared. Yeah, uh, okay. from roll 20. I got it. All right. Uh, I'll we, I will roll... I'll spend a momentum for an extra die. Okay. Oh, wait, I can only... Wait, wait, no, no, no. I'm going to give you a threat so that I can use that talent. Okay. So are you only buying the one die, or are you buying more than that? The one die, because we're going to have uh, Obidus assisting. Okay. Oh yeah, McCall also disconnected from uh, from Yikes. Discord. So, all right. Well, uh, that is a uh, double yikes. Yeah. So that is just one success here. Um, no complications, though. Yeah, no complications. Uh, so, do you want to re-roll that with determination? I already spent determination. You could challenge a value and get a determination point back, or uh, if you have a value that uh, would maybe be disadvantageous to this, the uh, current situation, I could offer you a complication uh, in turn for another sort of determination. Definitely don't want to take that deal. <laughs> yeah, maybe we just like leave it until we get back and just hope we can s sort stuff out without the extra help. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at your values. Let's I've got to uh, keep ears open, when in doubt, lie, opportunity plus instinct ex equals profit, and sometimes the only thing more dangerous than a question is an answer. 
I would say that... I mean, the last one sounds kind of relevant. Well, the key thing is it has to be something that is detrimental to the current situation. I would say if you, whatever you find, because you're the one doing the task, if you deliberately lie to the rest of the staff well, based on the information you find, then I will give you a point of determination. But you have to be... You, you, you can't give, like, a half-truth. You have to flat-out lie as what you find. What would be the point of doing that? <laughs> well, I don't understand what the point of doing that would be. Well, you know. Maybe it's really bad news. Or maybe there's profit to be made. Yeah, I would say the other, the other uh, determination I could offer you is that um, you are so focused on making profit from this information that you would suffer an increased complication range for the remainder of the session. No, I'm not going to take those deals. We'll, we'll just leave it until we can actually spend time to pull this thing apart. Okay. As is your choice. So, yeah. How, then, how to get back to the planet. Mm -hmm. That's the next thing you got to figure out. Captain, or perhaps we may not have to. It is a very risky maneuver, but there are there have been recorded attempts of warp speed transport, where um, you you can engage transport at high while at high velocity. And it will beam the it will beam the targets to the intended destination from greater distance, but. There is a high risk of failure due to the momentum of the transporting vessel. I could, that is true. I could transport a select number of youth to the planet while at warp and then engage in uh, distraction techniques until you are ready for uh, pickup. But do we necessarily need to be at the planet in order to initiate the jump? The answer to that is if you push the red button again, if you are close enough to the planet, conceivably another gateway would open up and you would go right back from whence you came. Assuming we have the energy to do that. Or the planet has the energy. That's the tent. Let's hit the red button. If it doesn't have energy, we have a whole other problem we have to solve. Okay. So, pushing the red button again, that's going to be a daring and con. Uh, the ship will assist you with a structure con this time. And uh, this is going to be a difficulty of five. Ooh. Okay. Well, I will spend... I will give you... Uh... Two dice with threat, because you have a lot of threat already. Mm -hmm. So that's three threat to you. Okay, plus con. Well, that's three successes already, and I get to reroll one of those. Yep, and if someone could get three. structure con for the ship. I have the ship up. All right, four successes from Darval. So all we need to see is one further success here. Oh. Fortunately, no. So Darval, uh, your options here mm -hmm. are either to spend determination to re-roll some of those successes in the hope that you get a crit, mm -hmm. or um, you simply fail at the task and something happens. Uh, I should have spent determination at the start of all this. Oh, well, too late now. Um... Captain, I believe that we're just too far away from the planet to have any measures to have any success. We'll need to get closer in order to try again. Well, it's not so much that as when uh, you hit the red button. Sure enough, a portal does open up, but your transition this time, much, much more violent and much, much more destructive. And by that, I mean I get to roll a grand total of... I get to roll two system hits. 
So the sensors and the structure are each going to take a breach on the Venus. And since I rolled structure, I do have to roll a challenge die. Good news is no one is hurt. But uh, the good news is that when the transition period is over, you have reappeared uh, in the system with the Amalthea, uh, the Ophion, the Leviathan, and uh, any other ships that might have come over in this general vicinity. Most likely the Miwan, considering the uh, Tucson is here. Yeah, so that's here as well. But you are you are back in your own universe. Sorry, I apologize, Captain. That was not a very smooth ride. Hey, you did what you needed to do. That's all that matters. Did we have anybody decide to follow along? Does not appear to be at the moment, no. Okay, let's get this computer core onto into a science bay and pull it apart. Admiral Skull to, bar, to Captain Tuzon, is that you? That's us, Captain, or Admiral. It's a little bumpy coming back, but we seem to have survived. Although we've kind of come to a conclusion. We don't want to send the Leviathan back. That sounds like a very interesting report, and I look forward to reading it, including the appendices this time. Uh, I'll be sure to include multiple appendices for you. Um, I, be I believe that it would be best if the uh, if Admiral took the fleet to yellow alert. Okay. Just in case. So it has been noted. Um, i just like to say, guys, all of you will be receiving one voucher for a free drink, limited to one drink, at the Prax. At the Plexus, whatever I called it. <laughs> that is oddly generous of you. What is the catch? No catch. I'm just glad to be back. You're just glad to be able to get... Also, more of you coming in brings more people. It's there's a whole market dynamic. It's it's feet on the ground thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we are going to have a scene change. So go down one momentum. And if I read the situation carefully, uh, free pack, you're going to be in engineering working on that computer core. Yeah. Indeed. All right. Uh, do you want anybody there assisting you, or you just want to handle this yourself? Uh, whatever science egghead is interested in coming and taking a Anyone have any uh, supporting characters or main characters they'd like to have present for this? Let's see. I don't have any sciencey characters, so I don't think so. Not for me. <clears throat> uh, I mean... Freer can come along because he has a four of science and research methods and among other things. Sure, why not? All right. So, uh, Prier and Freepak, uh, you're working on the computer core. Uh, it is a smaller one, uh, maybe about the size of uh, a Defiance computer core. So, compared to the Amalthias, it's like nothing. Um, but you basically spend a good portion of time uh, running wires of power and running lines to uh, terminals to po both power up the core and begin interfacing with it. And because you have unlimited time here, uh, I'm just going to say that sure enough, you are able to activate the computer core and begin querying its records. Uh, Freepak kind of like steps back from the terminal that he's hunched over and like dusts his hands off. Ah, took a little bit of uh finessing what with all these uh quantum bit diodes, but uh, we, we cracked it, we're in. It's good to hear. Would you like me to alert the Admiral? Uh, yeah, give it a second. I want to ask this thing a couple of questions without the brass barging in. 
uh, uh, if you don't mind. I mean, if, if you want to go running and telling people, you, know, you can do that. You're the engineer. Uh, computer, could you list uh, schematics for the quantum propulsion drives? So the computer does have uh, general information about such drives, but it is unable, it is not able to give you like, hey, this is how you build one kind of a thing. Ah, uh, all right, just I'll download that information and tuck it away for later. I'll just smile, trying to get more profit there. It it would benefit everybody. What do you? I mean, you know, you gotta have people with that develop these things. Where do you think they get? Ah, oh, whatever. Go ahead and tell the captain. I have my comment. Prayer to uh, Captain Arthur and Skull. Have you got the computer core up and running? It seems to be functioning. All right, we'll be down shortly. So, you know, after a few moments, both uh, Captain Merthrin and Admiral Skull do show up. <clears throat> Report, oh. Chief. Uh, well, it took a little bit, but uh, considering it's mostly Federation, uh, getting the power wasn't that difficult, uh, but, you know, uh, ask a question, see what we got. Computer, please identify your ship of origin. Ship of origin is USS Thunderchild. Of course. Your pack kind of just pulls on this collar a little bit. Uh, what information do you have about the s system, about the USS Leviathan? Begin playback, Captain's Log. And it's a garbled sort of visual, but the audio is clear. Uh, it is a masculine voice. Uh, might even be a, t a Tellarite, you're not really sure. Um, but the captain uh, says, this is Captain Sh Thunderchild. This is it. We've been dealing with the Atioc for the better part of two centuries now, and Honestly, I think this is our last stand. Uh, the good news is that most of the universe classes have made it out of the, the galaxy, uh, so the Federation will survive, at least in some capacity. Uh, only thing left is the Leviathan. We're trying to use the planet we found, uh, generates wormholes. We're trying to send it along, but unfortunately, uh, the Atioc have found us. Uh, it's only a matter of time before their armada descends and, frankly, wipes most of us out. I don't know if anyone will pretty much ever hear this, uh, so if you are, uh, I guess I should start from the beginning. Uh, about uh, time of uh, Captain Kirk's famous mission, uh, the Atioc began cascading across what would be the Gamma Quadrant uh, on a direct path towards Earth. Uh, we found out by the time the Enterprise D was commissioned and launched, but by that point, there was nothing that could be done. Uh, there was far too many Atioc ships to be dealt with in any conceivable manner. They were, to put it bluntly, worse than the Borg. Uh, we did our best. I mean, that's what Starfleet does. Is We're idiots, but we try. And... As much as I hate to admit that we failed, we did. And really the only reason I'm talking to you now, again, assuming anyone even hears this, is that in a bid to save what we could of the Federation, we constructed the, the Universe class as massive generation ships. Of course, you know, people who didn't get onto the ships weren't exactly thrilled with that fact, and... Needless to say, the Federation sort of devolved into infighting and riots and basically nothing anyone wants to see. Uh, so yeah, that's the situation. And again, if anyone's hearing this, just pray that you don't have to deal with the Atioc. Though I have a feeling you probably are if you're hearing this. So good luck with that. 
and the log cuts out. All right. Pull everything on this computer that is about these ATOC. Right. I have a report to start writing to the Admiralty on Earth. As soon as, you're, as soon as I get back, have Dragon Squad report to my office. I want a full briefing of everything they've encountered. Send me a full compiled report when you have things. Uh, will we'll do, do, Captain. Um, any idea what they're going to have us do with this hulk of a ship sitting out here? My oh. guess is they'll want it up and running. Chief Free Pack, um, as of this moment, you are lead engineer on the. Your lead, uh, uh, your uh, your additional duties in include team management for the USS Leviathan. Until we decided what we're going to do with it, it is now under our banner. I want any engineer that is that is on duty, not doing anything more important than basic than um, fixing broken systems on that ship tearing everything apart and figuring out how things work. Man, let me just say, I did not expect all this when I came. You know, building space stations, catapults, now rebuilding future ships from the... I don't... Uh, well, I'm going to have so much fun. Keep it up, Chief. You might actually make it... We may have to promote you. Oh, don't do that. Unless it doesn't come with a pay raise. Duly noted. And with that, I'm going to spin on my heels and head to my ready room, where I may just have a small drink and a small cry. Yeah. <laughs> Mercer might actually join you for that. Sure. So we... Uh, so like, as he leaves the room, he sort of comments, skull. So, once again, we've got something that's going to destabilize the power balance of the entire quadrant. I think on my next position is I'm going to request a position on Earth. Fine, stable no, I'm, I'm, Earth. I'm actually starting to regret trying chucking Q out of my room that first day. And yeah, uh, I'm sure you walk into the ready room and guess who's waiting for you? Uh, I just side eye uh, Captain Murphy. the devil. Would you like a second go? Oh, please, walk out again. I, I always love seeing your expression like that. It's it's highly amusing. Madam Q. Rear Admiral Skull. So. So, on a scale of one to... On a scale of one to... Uh, let's go... Gave the Klingons quantum slipstream drive three centuries ago. How badly am I doing? <laughs> well, that would be giving you spoilers. But now that you're not kicking me out of your office, I come with a bit of advice. You probably only have one more attempt at getting what you need from the other side. Of course, I could help you, but you know what that means. So long as it doesn't involve turning us into dragons again. No, nothing like that. Uh, honestly, it probably says something that at this point I am willing to go with the whatever the Q want just to keep things stable. Hmm. You know, it's funny. I uh, When I talk to humans, they're all about not keeping the status quo, about not keeping things stable. I find it highly amusing that we've now reached the point where even someone like you, Captain Murthren, is begging for normality. Oh, the Federation's always been about biting off more than it can chew, but uh, well, let's just say I think we're getting to the point where we're, pa we're too powerful for our own good. Hmm. Well... I'll give you your mortal time to think about it. And she snaps her fingers. And uh, with a stereotypical flash of Q light, she disappears. But in her place, she leaves a contract. Like an old-fashioned pen and paper contract. 
I think we'll have Free Pack look this over. Absolutely. Now, in my ready room, I had a decent amount of scotch hidden behind one of the bulkhead platings. What do you keep behind yours, Captain? Uh, Mirthrin will sort of go over to actually the shelf and uh, sort of like move, move a couple of books aside and uh, I don't know. What, what, what's a really strong Vulcan alcohol? I think in general, Vulcan drinks are just generally strong because of how muted they are as a people. Okay, so I'll sort of take and go. All right, uh, I forget what this one's called exactly, but um, I imagine if they made vodka, but instead of pure, instead of potatoes, they used alcoholic potatoes as the base. I'm in. Well, who, who knows? Maybe, I mean, it'll definitely be you rather than me. I don't think I'll even be talking if I drink this at the moment. Fair enough. I look down at my symbiote and say, just remember, you wanted this. Hmm. And I'll... And M- Mithra will sort of get, get himself like a lemon honey and ginger or something and then just sort of hold it up and go... To getting in over our heads. <laughs> and I down it in one shot. And yeah, uh, as much as that means that's a shorter session, I think this is a perfect opportunity to call the session because that uh, you got a lot to think about. And I've actually got to write up the contract. So, uh, you know, a lot of things have to happen here. So this is where I'm going to end the stream. Uh, but players, of course, stick around for a little bit longer. But to anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc., thank you so much for tuning in. And we will hopefully see these guys next week. Bye, stream. Bye, stream.